What's up everybody? My name is Annie and welcome back to Kit Guru. So Asus are known for their high-end Republic of Gamers products and peripherals. Five years ago they released the 12 button Spartha wireless gaming mouse which came with a case, a dock, spare switches and more but it was very big, heavy and expensive at $139.99. Fast forward to today and Asus are back at it again, but this time with the Spartha X, an almost identical mouse in every way, but of course has some improvements and even a downgrade. Is it worth an even higher asking price of $149.99? Let's find out. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to support us for free. Thank you very much. Let's start with the unboxing. The box itself is big with the mouse on the top, followed by a nice cushioned pouch to store the mouse in. I'm not entirely sure of the point of this pouch as the mouse is possibly the least portable mouse I've ever seen and the dock itself is the wireless receiver so I can't imagine anyone using this on the go. It's also a downgrade from the original Spartha because that came with a hard case. Next up we have half of the dock. It's identical to the original Spartha's dock. It's made from plastic with a nice large ROG logo and two connector pins to charge the mouse once seated. It does also have an RGB LED on the base of this one though to indicate power levels as well. Next up we have two 2 meter long paracord cables which are USB-A to USB-C and needs a USB 2.0. One cable is for the dock and the other can be used for wired mode if needed. The cables themselves are very soft and easy to remove kinks but I did find the paracord bunched up and twisted at certain points of the cable. This was frustrating and looked messy as well. So mainly I used it in wireless mode anyway, just putting that out there. Next up is the base of the charging dock. This is nice and weighty as instead of plastic they went for metal here to give the dock some stability. After inserting the cable the base just simply slides into place. Then we get two spare ROG micro switches which are the same ones pre-installed in the mouse. So finally we get a tool to open the mouse up to be able to swap the switches if need be and more on this later. So aesthetically it's as gamer orientated as possible. Angles and flares everywhere with various RGB zones. It looks like a spaceship from a sci-fi movie to me at least. The body is made up of multiple shells. The main shell on the back swoops down from a high hump with the ROG RGB logo towards the back end but this is raised up from the base section which we can see via this gap here between the shell of the mouse and the gunmetal section underneath. It's a right-handed mouse so it's angled down to the right for comfort. The right side of the mouse is a separate shell with a large ring finger rest and rubber grip for your pinky support too. The primary buttons have angular comfort grooves and are separated from the main shell. Here we can see two buttons on the left corner of the primary button on the left side as well. The scroll wheel is RGB and has a super grippy ROG designed rubber grip. It has incremental movements and the click is nice as well. The front of the mouse is angled too rather than being straight or symmetrical. We have a USB-C port in the middle and some gunmetal accents coming from underneath. On the left hand side we have six more buttons surrounded by a rubber ROG patterned grip. This six button area is also the largest RGB LED zone with transparent diffusion between each button that lights up. All the RGB zones are very bright at 100% and they do look great. I'm glad they didn't go overboard with the RGB as well. I think it's quite nice having these three zones. So going back to the left side, these six buttons are angled towards the center as the idea is to have your thumb in the center and then press the surrounding buttons by moving your thumb in their direction. The outside of the button's shells are textured and mattified but the insides are actually gloss so do expect thumbprints. Despite the main shell of the mouse being an almost slightly rubberized texture, but it's not sticky at all I might add, it is easy to pick up fingerprints too. Lastly, underneath it is made from a large metal plate with four glide pads which are super smooth on my material mat. There's no friction at all and I actually really enjoyed the feel from this mouse. At £150 though, I'd have liked to have seen spares included in the box but sadly we don't get any here. In the center we have our sensor. 
To the right, we have two prongs that connect to the dock, which is magnetic, by the way, a power switch and a pair button. The Spartha X is massive overall. The physical design is identical to the 2016 release, coming in at 89 by 137 by 45 centimeters. For those with big hands, it will be great. But for me, I found it to be comfortable with palm grip mainly. Claw grip was okay, but fingertip grip just didn't work for me because I've got medium sized hands. It still looks great in 2021, despite the design not changing from 2016. I feel like they could have made a bit of an effort to adjust the design slightly Slightly though, Matthew did a written review of the original Spartha over on our website kitguru.net and he complained about the six button layout on the left hand side saying that despite it being visually appealing, they weren't always practical in use and I would have to agree with that. I found reaching the middle and the buttons on the back end with my thumb to be uncomfortable and awkward. The front three buttons and upper buttons to the back were much easier to reach. The same can be said for the DPI button below the scroll wheel. This forces you to cycle through all DPI stages to find that you want, rather than having a forward or back button. There are two buttons on the left side of the primary left click, which defaults to forward and back for browser use, and I feel this could have been better suited to DPI forward and back instead. I thought this may be possible to rebind in the software, but sadly you can only bind DPI switching to one button, rather than say DPI stage up and DPI stage down. However, the Spartha X does now have DPI on the scroll to combat this issue. You can press and hold the DPI button for three seconds and then scroll the scroll wheel in either direction to set the desired DPI on the fly. The six buttons themselves are mostly consistent with feel, with a noticeable click when actuated and no pre or post travel, but the middle button was definitely more spongy in feel without that noticeable click. The two smaller buttons on the left side of the left click are nice and clicky too, and of course we have the ROG micro switches found in the primary buttons, and these are very satisfying. There's no noticeable pre-travel in these, but there is quite a bit of post-travel here, and it is noticeable. Here's a sound test of all the buttons for you. So build quality wise, I'm glad to report it's excellent. There's no rattle at all from any of the buttons or scroll wheel, it's totally silent. The same can be said for flex, there just isn't any. This mouse not only weighs as much as a tank, but it's built like one too, which is great. I mentioned before that the mouse came with ROG micro switches installed along with having spares of them. The original Spartha had Omrons with a lifespan of 20 million clicks, whereas these ROG micro switches are nearly four times longer lasting as they have a rating of 70 million clicks. As mentioned earlier, they're super snappy and they do feel great. If for whatever reason you need to change them though, it is easy to do. So pop out the four rubber plugs from the base and use the tool included to remove the four screws. Then lift the base of the mouse towards the front of it and the shell will come off. You can then just pull the switches out and push fit in new ones. Just remember to face the switches button towards the front of the mouse when inserting them. This whole process is super easy and I think anyone will be able to do it, which is a great thing. This time around the Spartha X has a PAW3370 optical sensor, which is exactly the same sensor used in the Asus ROG Gladius 3 wireless mouse. This sensor gives up to 19,000 dpi compared to the more reasonable 8,200 dpi of the original. 19,000 sounds great, but really who uses that? Even 8200 dpi is above anything I'd practically use myself. 
The new Spartha X also has 400 IPS though, which is greatly approved upon from the original's 150 IPS. As is acceleration, the Spartha X has 50 grams, whereas the Spartha original had 30. Sadly though, the original Spartha had up to 2000 Hz polling rate, whereas the new Spartha X has been downgraded to just 1000 Hz. However, the original could only hit this 2000 Hz when in wired mode and drop down to 1000 when in wireless mode. This is a shame though, especially in 2021 for a flagship mouse that costs £150, I'd really expect to see that 2000Hz polling rate to be an option even in wireless mode, just like the Corsair Dark Core RGB Pro does. It's also worth noting that higher polling rates do require more processing power though. I reached out to Asus to ask about the downgrade and they said the 2016 Spartha's 2000Hz polling rate was based on firmware simulation that was designed by a third-party company. To have better support for software and firmware this time around, they decided to do it themselves. They also found the original Spartha had potentially bigger jitter under higher DPI2, and because the Spartha X's firmware is now not outsourced to another company, they can optimize both the software and firmware to give better overall performance. So essentially what they're saying is we've lost 2000 Hz polling rate, but potentially we have a more reliable and stable sensor as a result of it, and and to be honest, I'll take that trade off. More on performance later. Connectivity wise, we can use the mouse wired with the included two meter power cord USB-C to USB-A cable in a USB 2.0 port, or of course we can use it wirelessly using the RF 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode, which the original Spartha also had, by the way. To do this, the dock must be plugged into your PC as the dock acts as the wireless receiver, and there is a pair button on the back of the dock if for whatever reason the mouse unpairs itself. I used the mouse mainly in wireless mode the majority of my testing and it worked absolutely flawlessly without any issues or dropouts at all. Okay, so at £150 asking price, this is mainly aimed at prosumers wanting a high-end dockable wireless gaming mouse. I'd also like to say that this mouse is aimed at MMO and MOBA players. The original Spartha weighs in at a whopping 178 grams and Asus even marketed this one towards MMO players by stating that the design was optimized for MMO gaming. However, they've omitted this wording from the Spartha X this time around, despite the design remaining identical. The Spartha X is lighter, but only by 10 grams, so it's still super heavy at 168 grams. In 2021, I feel most people want more lightweight mice, but as an MMO player, I still use a Razer Naga Pro Wireless, which I thought was heavy at 117 grams, but that feels ultra lightweight in comparison to the Spartha X. For me personally, the Spartha X is just too heavy, and I certainly wouldn't opt to use this for FPS games, as the weight will cause some delay in movement compared to using a lightweight mouse. After rebinding the buttons in the software, I found the mouse to be excellent when playing MMO games. I tested it out with extended sessions on Elder Scrolls Online, and honestly, it was great. There was no delay, no jitter, no failed inputs. It just worked very well. But I must admit, I still prefer my Razer Naga Pro Wireless when playing MMOs, as that has a 1 to 12 number pad on the side, which was much easier to use than the awkwardly placed six buttons of the Spartha X. Battery wise, we have a huge improvement over the original Spartha. The 2016 version touted 33 hours life, yet the Spartha X claims to have up to 67 hours with RGB turned off. During my testing, I managed to get approximately 20 hours of continuous use on one full charge, which was about three days of use for me, but this was in completely the worst case, unideal circumstance, as I had RGB brightness on at 100% and set to full speed effects with sleep turned off too. I think that RGB off and sleep enabled, you should get close to those claimed 67 hours of battery life. Charging took approximately three and a half hours for a full charge to 100%, but remember Remember there's a charging dock, so providing your PC can give USB power whilst turned off, your Spartha X should never really run out of juice, even when using RGB. Software wise, you want to make sure you download the Asus Armory Crate. Plug the dock in separately and connect the mouse via USB, as this is the only way to install the firmware updates. After that, we have tabs along the top. Buttons tab is first. Here you can select any button other than the left click to rebind to anything you'd like. There's so many choices, you can really customize those 12 programmable buttons to whatever you fancy. Next is performance. Here you can change the four DPI stages, changing the polling rate 
from 125 to 1000 Hz, and you can enable or disable angle snapping. Next is Lighting tab. There's a great selection of effects and options here from colors, speeds, directions of effects, and more. Calibration lets you select any Asus mouse mat surface, or you can manually calibrate to your own mat as well. You can also change the liftoff distance from low to high here, and I'm glad they've added that as an extra. Next is power, and here you can see your battery life, get alerts for battery percentage, and enable sleep mode. Lastly is the firmware update page. In conclusion, the Spartha X is pretty much identical to the 2016 Spartha, but with a few minor improvements to make it hold its own within 2021. We have improved battery, better sensor specs, and yes, it's sad not to have that 2000 Hz polling rate anymore, but we do get a potential more stable product as a result of it, and in my testing it worked flawlessly. We also have DPI on the scroll, a pivoted button mechanism, better switches with better life too. So overall the Sparfa X has great build quality, great performance and feel, but for me it was just slightly too heavy and those six buttons are placed on the left hand side slightly awkward and I found them awkward in certain situations. If you have larger hands then I think the Sparfa X is more suited towards you than me. I also feel Feel like Asus made minimal quality of life upgrades over the original and just placed a higher £150 price tag on it. I'd have much rather have seen the Spartha X be lighter again. 168 grams is really heavy, along with a redesign of the button layout to make it more intuitive to use. For those already that love the original Spartha though, you'll be right at home with the Spartha X. However, if you're like me with medium sized hands and after a mouse for MMO games, then I'd recommend checking out our review of the Razer Naga Pro Wireless that is £30 cheaper at £120 and it's also 51 grams lighter than the Sparfa X. So let me know what you think of the Sparfa X. Do you like it? Do you not? Let us know down in the comments. Make sure to check out our merchandise down below and check out our website daily for tech news. I'm Andy, this is KitGoo. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.